Hello, welcome back to Hillbilly Physics, or if it's your first time, welcome the first time. I hope you come back and see us again. This is a real informative channel for occasion we get something right. So, uh, you know, it's bad, not a bad average, maybe. Don't guarantee it work either. Have you ever wondered what's the best way, what kind of heater to get to heat you? your house with sometimes. Maybe you need a little extra heat or maybe you need a whole lot of heat, but most of the years there's just a whole bunch of different heaters out there. You got them little ceramics that's supposed to be hotter than the sun. And then you got them them big old radiator kind that rolls around on wheels. And the heaters usually make pretty good and the wheels ain't. So it always gets lop eared and it drags and scratches your floor and you have to pick it up and carry it and it ain't got no handle on one side. But anyway, you wonder now what's the best way to heat my house? Some people tell you that uh, I've heard people say them little one tens will just run your juice bill plumb up. Them two twenties works better. Then then um, uh, occasionally they'll get on a bent like maybe the ceramic heaters and you would take one of them the size of a lunch box would, would heat a war house. And you really don't know. A lot of things to think about when you're heating a house. Like uh, how much you how much you energy, how much electric bill is going for waste. But I'm here happy to announce that electric heat is one of the most efficient ways to heat because you have so little waste. I mean 99 percent but just about all of them. And uh, what that means is because you got this juicer running around through there and the only place it goes is just to make this thing hot and what loss you've got is in the water is going to it so you get a little benefit out of that too. When you get to thinking about it, that's back to old George Ohm. You remember the G-E-O-R-G where his family couldn't afford an E, so they left, left it off his birth certificate. I guess that's the way it was. But uh, you get to wondering, you know, how much, what about efficiency? Well, it turns out that just about every machine we've got comes down to being a heat engine. Any source of generation, anyway is a heat engine. And what that means is heat goes from hot to cold, but cold don't ever go from cold to hot. It can't move. Now that don't mean that the air can't get warm and go up and take your balloon up. In fact, down south, back before they had air conditioning so prominently and all they made their ceilings up high. So the heat in the summer would be down out of their living quarters. And in the winter, uh, I mean in the north, they kept it down lower because that keeps the heat down where it was at in the winter time. So it works about all got to do with, while heat can't move, air can. Warm air will tend to go up, but you don't care about all that. It comes down mostly to, well, back to heat engines, you can only get so efficient. Uh, with a heat engine. Now this is not really a heat engine in one sense, but it relies on heat engines to make the juice to run it. But just to mention, there's a thing called uh, uh, maximum efficiency of a heat engine, and that was determined by a Frenchman by the name of uh, Nicolas Carnot, C-A-R-N-O-T, Carnot, Carnot. He was a mechanical engineer back in the early 1800s, and uh, he's a pretty smart fella, but he had a short life. I'll tell you a, bit, a little bit about that in a minute, but this, uh, 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 it comes right down to how, how efficient something is. Now, I remember back several years ago, somebody built this year wood stove, and it had a thermostat control on the damper and you could control it very well to hold heat and these these people just oh you can put a log in there and stay warm all night I fell for it I was stupid I bought one of them and you could you could keep a 
a, a log slowly burning for days, but you couldn't get no heat out of it. An old guy, an old farmer told me after I'd bought the thing and, and before I let on that I'd been rooked, he said, you know, they'll talk about them stoves that just burn on. You can't get no heat out of them unless you burn something. Well, old fool me, I didn't even consider it that way. I just felt what everybody said, just like some of them our ceramic heaters that are supposed to heat that warehouse. I didn't buy one, though. I was smarter then. But it comes down to this. You want to know which one you get the most heat out of, which is better. Um, what shape and and what 210 or 220. Well, actually, which one you get the most heat out of? Neither. It depends on how much energy you put into it. And since you pay for it when you buy it, for the amount of heat you get out of it, you're going to pay the same price for a little one or a big one. You just determine who's warm and who ain't, I guess. But really, it comes down to the shape and the way the heat is distributed. A radiant heater will usually just heat what it hits, and one of the blower on it will kind of disperse it all over. Uh, that comes down to just figuring that out for yourself. But the reason I say you're not going to get any real bargains out of them is in a 110 circuit, you're 1,500 watts is all you're going to get out of them. They've got some that put out less for smaller spaces, like I use them in a tent where I was uh, tent camping in, in campgrounds. And I could plug my little heater in and keep my tent warm. But really, 1,500 watts is what limits you because you can only push so much current to the size wire that's feeding that circuit. And then on a, a 220 or, or 240, however you want to designate it, you've got uh, usually 3,300. So you're actually pulling more juice, uh, less current, well, about the same amount of current. But you can, use, you can get by with a little bit more than double 15 because they usually use number 10 instead of number 12 wire, which will carry more safely. And that whole thing is just so you don't hook up a blast furnace and burn your house down the wire to bring it to you. Uh, so I guess uh, it all comes down to the, the way you distribute the heat and which seems to work better for you. But I have found personal experience that the, the little, the, well actually the bigger the heater in size, generally speaking, seems to work better. Especially I like those oil field heaters because they they tend to, they're slower to warm up but they they kind of, kind of mellow. They don't, they don't fade away as quick either. So you've got them on a the thermostat. When the thermostat kicks it off and it says it's warm enough, it takes it longer to cool down. And it ain't got a lot out there hot and cold, hot and cold. You just kind of got warm and hot, maybe, if you're lucky. One more thing, though. I'm sure I'm glad you watched this, but I was just telling you about old, old Nicholas Carno. He got, uh, he was only 30... 36 years old when he died, he had a cholera epidemic there in Paris, when, uh, and, and he got the cholera. He, was, he had done a lot of research and writings and had a bunch of notes and stuff, and unfortunately because he, was, uh, he died of cholera and it was, it was highly contagious, um, especially before they understood how it was uh, spread around. They buried a lot of his papers and notes with him. So we don't know whether he had any more brilliant ideas or not. Thank you for watching. It's been fun talking about heaters. We'll talk about something else next time. What do you think, Pat? See anything? What a pretty day today, ain't it? I see your nose wiggling. You must smell something good. No squirrels today.
What you looking at? What is it? Oh well. Just guard the fort.